Subway, the most popular place to eat after losing a custody battle. While America may love Subway, it looks like some other countries are having a hard time swallowing it. Subway, one of the most recognizable sandwich shops, was told it's not even serving bread. At least according to Ireland's Supreme Court, the Irish Independent reports that Subway's heated sandwiches like the hot meatball sub doesn't have bread because it's too sugary. The court battle has to do with a special tax in Ireland. It offers a zero tax rate for certain foods like regular bread if it meets certain requirements. Yo, are you being serious? According to Ireland's Supreme Court, Subway bread is not actually bread because it's too sugary. And I, for one, am willing to bet that Subway is very happy to have this be their big controversy. Yeah, they're probably like, yep, our bread is too sweet. That's the scandal you should think about when you think about Subway. Make it the top search result for Subway scandal. We deserve it. Sweet bread, that's our thing. To me, this ruling really just shows you that Ireland and America are dealing with very different issues right now. America's Supreme Court is on the brink of striking down healthcare and abortion rights, and Ireland's Supreme Court is like, oh, this bread, it is a wee bit sweet. Might have to look into it. it tastes a bit like sugar, like, did I mix up the flour with the sugar? Yeah, three cups of sugar as opposed to flour. I don't know about that. Moving on to some news from the animal kingdom. If you're bringing your kids to the zoo this weekend, you may need to cover their ears at the parrot exhibits. Well, some foul-mouthed parrots at a British zoo are in big trouble for swearing at people. Five African gray parrots were donated from separate owners to the Lincolnshire Wildlife Park within the same week. Well, the birds quarantined together, but staff said the parrots were soon swearing and cussing at each other, and then also at visitors who started cussing back. The zoo removed the parrots from public view. Nah, people. This is so unfair. Parrots just repeat what they hear. So if they're cursing, it's not their fault. It's the zookeeper's fault for letting them watch the presidential debate. And by the way, we hear the parrots cursing because they can learn English, but you realize other animals are cursing all the time too, right? I mean, they're all locked in prison. That's what a zoo is. And they didn't even commit any crimes. Every time you hear a lion roar, that's just another animal going, I want my lawyer. It's not murder. It's the circle of life. But here's what confuses me. Why is the zoo removing the parrots? Are you guys insane? This sounds like by far the best zoo you could ever go to. You know where I can see a bird that doesn't curse? Literally anywhere. And look, I get that you wanna shield the children from it, so fine. Make an adults only part of the zoo. You know, that's where the parrots can curse, monkeys can hump each other, and those dogs can gamble. In other news, do you guys remember President Obama? Yeah, the nice guy America was with before she got catfished. Well, for people who missed the 44th president of the United States, here's a way that you can keep a little piece of him with you at all times. Rare items that belong to Barack and Michelle Obama are going on the auction block. The former president's number 23 high school basketball jersey and the school's 1979 yearbook are expected to fetch, get this, up to $200,000. Also for sale, a vintage black cocktail dress that Michelle Obama wore to a charity fundraiser in 2010. This is believed to be the only gown of hers ever to be offered in an auction. It is expected to sell for up to $70,000. The separate auctions take place in December. The auction house says the Obamas did not put the items up for yeah. sale. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Does this not seem shady to anyone else? There's an auction of Obama memorabilia, but the Obamas were not involved? I mean, does Obama even know about this? Are they like, and the next item up for bidding? Barack Obama's wallet. And he's watching at home like, uh, what the hell? For real, man. I think it's pretty ballsy selling Obama's stuff without his permission. The man has droned people for less. You guys are taking chances. And some of the items don't even make sense. Like, why does anyone want Obama's old basketball jersey? He wasn't in the NBA. That's like paying thousands of dollars for LeBron's high school history test. That's not why he's famous. Although I will say this, having Obama's yearbook could be pretty cool, you know? It might be a nice change of pace to look through a public figure's old yearbook for fun instead of for evidence. But I guess this is life. People are willing to pay big money for this kind of stuff. 
And if a yearbook and some old clothes are gonna sell for $200,000, man, the Obamas should just, they should jump in. They should have a yard sale. They'd make a killing. Barack should just be out there in the yard like, uh, this USB cord uh, has been in the family since 2007. And I'm only asking $10,000 for it. Yeah, it works. You just gotta wiggle the thing. You gotta wiggle the thing and it starts charging. Sometimes it'll shock you, uh, but that's life. Let's move on to COVID-19, the virus that's harder to get rid of than a Facebook account. Every day, we're learning more and more about the virus and who is most at risk. And we all know about the elderly and people with health conditions, but now there's a new risk factor you probably hadn't thought of. Scientists say people who inherited genes from Neanderthal ancestors, ancestors rather, may be more susceptible to a severe case of COVID-19. European study published yesterday links a higher risk of hospitalization and respiratory failure to a cluster of genes associated with the Neanderthals. Those genes are found in about 16% of the European population, half the population in South Asia and is now non-existent in Africa and East Asia. Researchers are not sure why the coronavirus is impacting these gene types and say more studies are necessary. Yo, 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 yo. That is crazy. People with Neanderthal genes are more likely to be affected by coronavirus? Honestly, guys, this is kind of embarrassing because now if you get COVID, it means your great, great, great ancestor probably smashed a caveman. How could you, Nana? It was a different time back then. He had fire and I was cold. He asked me to come over for some cave art and chill. He was so sweet. And I don't know about you, but this was surprising for me because I didn't know that Europeans still had Neanderthal genes. And by the way, this is great news for Africans because they have none. Yeah, right now there's some dude walking around Uganda like, oh, who's the savages now, eh? Muzungu, looking at you. But right now I know, a lot of you are probably wondering whether or not you have Neanderthal genes. And there's actually a pretty easy way to tell, right? If there's a guy behind you that looks like a monkey and a guy in front of you that looks like a human, then you, my friend, are a Neanderthal. It's just science. I don't make the rules. But while there's still a lot to learn about this disease, there are some things that scientists are fairly sure of right now. Wearing a mask helps. Washing your hands helps. And most importantly, do not spend a lot of time in unsanitary enclosed spaces with lots of other people. Unfortunately, there are still some people who really don't like listening to scientists. The White House has blocked a new order from the CDC to keep cruise ships docked until mid-February. The administration will instead allow the ships to sail after October 31st. The CDC says that there have been recent outbreaks of the virus on cruise ships overseas, showing that cruises continue to help spread the virus, even when ships sail at reduced passenger capacity. According to Axios, public health officials have privately complained that the thwarting of the CDC's cruise ship ban is politically motivated because the industry is a major economic presence in Florida, a key battleground state where the polls are statistically tied. Oh, hell no. We're doing cruises again? Yo, guys, this is one of the worst things you can do during a pandemic. Corona's gonna be rolling around that ship like Jay-Z in the big pimping video. That's why I let it love him. Now that I'm... <laughs> it almost feels like Trump is actually trying to get people infected now. Cruises are legal again. And from now on, everyone has to cover their sneezes with another person's mouth. Now, I don't care what anybody says. This is clearly a politically motivated decision by Donald Trump. But there must be a safer way for him to win the support of Florida voters. Like, why not give the Medal of Honor to Pitbull or give tax credits to anyone with exposed ass cheeks? I don't even understand why anyone wants to go on a cruise during Corona. It's like boarding the Titanic knowing it's going to sink. The captain is like, I'm gonna steer this thing into an iceberg. And you're like, whatever, man, I just wanna meet Leonardo DiCaprio. But you know what? Maybe cruise fans are playing 5D chess. Yeah, because they know that Corona can't hurt you if the food poisoning from the seafood buffet kills you first. It doesn't make any sense for anybody living in America to get on a cruise ship right now, right? This country has a crazy high infection rate. We're all overeating. Nobody is sleeping well, and we're trapped in our homes most of the day. This is a cruise, people. You're getting the experience for free. And finally, some political news. After the fiasco that was the first presidential debate, Americans everywhere spoke up to say, please, 
We cannot go through something like this ever again. And now the commission that runs the debates is taking action. The Presidential Debate Commission is promising some rule changes after Tuesday's face-off in Cleveland. This comes amid the fallout from the first meeting between President Trump and Joe Biden that was filled with insults and lots of interruptions. Those changes could include turning off the microphone of the candidate, not answering the question, and then giving the moderator the ability to mute microphones as needed. Okay, okay. Cutting off Trump's mic might be a good idea, but they shouldn't have told him about it in advance. Because knowing Trump, now he's just gonna bring his own mic and a portable speaker like those guys in the subway. This next question is for Joe Biden. Showtime, folks! It's showtime! Showtime! Now, I don't know if this is gonna work because even without a microphone, Trump can still find a way to be a distraction without talking. In 2016, you remember? He made those ridiculous faces, yeah? He lurked in the background like a T-Rex in a suit. And of course, who can forget his interpretive ribbon dancing? This man knows how to steal focus. If you ask me, they should leave his mic on the same way they shouldn't ban his Twitter account. Because I don't want anybody making Donald Trump seem more sane than he is. Let America see who Donald Trump is. Open the mic! So look, we'll find out soon what the big changes are gonna be. But one of them has already been announced and I don't know guys, maybe it's because we made it, but it looks very promising. This guy, I want to see an honest okay. ballot. The Presidential Debate Commission has heard your concerns about how the last presidential debate went. Fewer interruptions. I, I'm appealing to you, sir, to do that. Well, and him too. That's why we've made some small tweaks to the process. The next debates will feature stricter time limits, more moderator control, and the president will be required to wear a muzzle. thrown out of the military. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. This sound dampening device has 15 pounds of reinforced concrete to reduce disruptive interruptions. We've also heard your concerns about our lack of fact checking, which is why this muzzle comes equipped with a sensor which will release this helium gas if it detects any falsehood. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. And if all else fails, the muzzle will activate a voice filter that will make Donald Trump sound more presidential. In many cases, radical left. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. The presidential debate muzzle. It's the next best thing to having a normal president.